Archers. Exploit blockchain. Yes? Okay, we have a lot of music, but I would like to have more dynamic between the speakers and the stage. So, I'm going to, we had two presentations that were very powerful in terms of cybersecurity, hacking, and all the, the things attached to that. So, I'm going to take this to a, a different level, uh, in the sense that I'm going more macro, and I'm going to talk about hacking DNA, and the challenge that you're going to have in the next, actually, one year to five or ten, that is, as we digitize our bodies, how this affects, in one hand, all the digital ecosystem that we are part of, but as well how this impacts the world economics and as well our own health, our own profiles and identity, and how this can change humanity in a lot of different ways. And I think this is particularly interesting to present this in a room full of hackers and cybersecurity experts because I think this is a multi-trillion dollars business. Um, it's already starting to boom, but the challenge is how this is going to affect not only just the business, but who we are as humans. And uh, my presentation is precisely about that, hacking the DNA of humanity. So, a bit about me. So, I'm a serial entrepreneur and author. I love to do a lot of things, as you probably see in my profile. I'm a founder of Studium, and I've been building a blockchain AI software called BlocksDNA that we're deploying to one million people in Africa as we speak. And I've been writing these two books that you're going to be listening, Blockchain, AI, and Cryptonomics, The Next Tsunami, which I'm going to partly mention here. And then, of course, another one that is how business and governments can prosper with blockchain, fintech, and AI. So I've been working with a lot of organizations worldwide, but my focus has been always on the bridge between thought leadership, uh, research, and making ideas into practice, and how can we change the world. And I'm a bit of an activist, you see uh, um, Greenpeace over there, so I think we should use these technologies to improve the world, not to screw it up a bit more. So, um, what is the biggest challenge that we face as humans? So, I think cybersecurity is definitely the world of our days, because it touches everything. It touches society, it touches governments, it touches um, geopolitical ecosystems. And as Brian mentioned before, we, have, we are actually in a very interesting country because you are one of the leading countries in technology. Uh, it's, a, it's a privilege to be here in Kiev. And I think being one of the leading countries in technology, you are as well in a very tricky geopolitical situation. But as well, this shows how complex it is the networks we are. So when we look at macro technology trends, the biggest sensitive stuff we have is definitely what? So my presentation is going to be touching about that. So what is the DNA of our time? So if you look at the DNA of our time, it's all about technology. We are technology driven, we sleep with our phones, we have our sensors all over the place, probably I think everyone here has at least two phones with you as we speak and every phone has around 20 to 40 sensors monitoring everything we do, and the data that we are creating in social media, emails and so forth, is creating a digital profile of each of us, and these digital profiles, of course, has been used by big corporations like the likes of Silicon Valley, but as well by governments to understand about us and how they can get more about this. So this is kind of what we have, but this is changing in a much, much bigger level at the moment. So, the DNA of our time is tech, data, and of course, I would put the foundational technology, tech, the foundational tech, blockchain, and AI. And why I say blockchain and AI? Of course, blockchain is still in its early days, although uh, people like me that have been talking about blockchain for three or four years, I'm very excited about it, but I know that the moment that Ethereum that was presented before still crashes with 200 people playing the, uh, the uh, crypto or crypto cats, something like that. So we have still a lot of challenge in terms of scalability of the technology, in terms of security, and in terms of how this is going to implement and take. And I think the, I made a parallel with the beginning of the internet. In the beginning of the internet, if you want to see 
uh, stream a video, it would crash the, the browser. We would have a lot of challenge into having programs that could help us and a lot of other things. So we are in the same ways with blockchain. And the same with AI. And I always relate blockchain and AI and I'll explain why. So this is the challenge at the moment that we have is that we have the physical digital ID and our organic ID. So our health, our blood circulation, everything right now is creating um, our, who we are. But at the moment we have a digitalization of all of this. And that, of course this, we can look at art, monitor, fitness, wearables, at the moment, we're digitalizing all the, our activities. Our physical, uh, like a bit of the organic and the digital are merging. And uh, of course, we're using, for now, data technologies, general technology. But in terms of, as we put, uh, artificial intelligence, especially right now, machine learning and algorithm-driven technology, and IoT, and then blockchain with smart contracts, we're creating something new that is the digital transformation and the foundational texts that are much more sensitive and much more um, neurologic in the sense that they touch everything. And uh, as this becomes mainstream, at the moment we're still in the early days, what we have is very, very incipient, but you're going to have this taking a much bigger level. So if you look at the present internet or the present digital ecosystems, we have websites, we have authentication, we have protocols, and then we have one identity per website and social media, which is a nightmare because all of us here probably have around 20 to 30 social profiles. We share our data and identity with platforms. Most of our platforms own our data. And of course, this ownership, it's very tricky because it's owned by these platforms, but who owns these platforms? Who has access to this data and so forth? So, with the new blockchain world, which we are building, it still doesn't exist, by the way, so no illusions, there's a lot of work to be done. We are creating one identity. And this is a big thing. As you create one identity for each of us, of course, this is great in one end because that means we can kill corruption, we can create more transparency, but you create a lot of issues as well, is that everyone will have access to our identity. And then, of course, the share of data has to be done by trust, otherwise this can be very scary. And the users, that's the very important thing. I believe in a world where our data is owned by us, and that's what I'm trying to do with technology. But this is, of course, beautiful in theory, in practice is much more challenge. And then, of course, smart contracts and machine learning, because smart contracts, in one end, is a way of machine learning, have to be making the bridge between all these different areas of identity. And this is the world we're building right now. And that's the challenge that we have. So, but, that, but the more important thing is that if you look at humanity, all of us here, what is our code? So everyone here is related with code, with cybersecurity, with, with different software that is coding things. But we as humans are code by DNA. DNA is our code. So what happens when we start hacking our own code? And that's my biggest challenge and my biggest question for all of us here because this is the biggest thing that happened in the history of mankind. It's not just me saying this. One of the founders of, and directors of Google was saying that blockchain and AI are the biggest invention of mankind after fire and electricity. And this is not it's something that I believe, but it's something that I'm as well very uh, preoccupied in trying to do this. So as DNA is our fundamental identity as humans, we are digitizing everything we are as humans. So that means our DNA can start being hacked, can start being manipulated as well. And for instance, as we speak, there's a lot of companies right now putting DNA of millions of people in smart contracts. For instance, Shivon, a company that uh, got recently an ICO of $40 million, is digitizing data of 25 million people in India. And this is just an example. There's plenty of companies doing this. But of course, this, uh, of course, if you act the smart contract where we have 25 million DNA people, you understand what we can do with that. But this becomes more interesting and more challenge. So as DNA encodes the different identity of us in terms of genetics, of course, coding of software does partly the same. And of course, the point right now is that as we evolve as humans, 
and we hack the database of ourselves, we can actually create anti-aging solutions, we can create people living until 200 years, which is already possible in theory, and there's a lot of companies owned by the likes of Google investing billions of dollars on that. But at the same time, of course, you can actually kill entire populations. Because if you act the database of a, a healthcare system in one country, well, we have a scenario of science fiction reality very fast. So, how can we deal with this? Of course, I think as we digitize, we can leapfrog and we can effectively f get fantastic things. And especially people like us can actually use the, o the optimization of code to improve life and humanity, but you can as well do a lot of damage because as humans, we are swarm intelligence and we tend to have geopoliticals and a lot of other issues in terms of coding. So, I think if you look at the, the foundational tech that we have at the moment, we have from the PC to AI to AR and VR and blockchain, and at the moment, most of the technologies that we are dealing, everyone in this room touches messaging, social media, identity kind of solutions, the digital transformation in the sense of governments becoming more digital. And for this, a very important data is that at the moment, everyone here in the room knows how much of the world economy is effectively digitized. And numbers? So 50%, more or less? More? Less? More? No, less. So at the moment, the world economy, only 10% of the world economy is digitized. Most of the world economy is paper. We are part of the elite of the 5% or 10% that are touching digital. Ironically, 10% of the world economy is digitized, so 90% is still not digitized, which opens a lot of opportunities for all of us here. But the challenge as well is that from Ironically, the 90% that have no access to digital ecosystems of society, governments, and governance, we have everyone mostly in the planet having a digital platform, having a phone or a smartphone. Around 80% of the world population has access to a smartphone. I was in Africa last week in a very poor country, and everyone had almost two phones. One very basic phone and one smartphone. Mostly, why two phones? Because the electricity doesn't reach there, so they cannot charge the smartphone for more than a couple of hours. So they have to use a basic non mobile phone, but everyone has access to a smartphone. So this is a very interesting thing. We have already a paradox in terms of technology and in terms of access to technology. But there's a paradox between us, people like us, building technology and societies and governments. And I think that's the challenge. So identity today, which is the biggest challenge we have, is complex, isolated, at that same time, it's time-consuming and vulnerable. As mentioned by Brian and the, the smart contract team, very interesting cases, I think the point with identity, and we're talking about data or technology, is very vulnerable. And of course, we have online, offline data, mostly paper data, and it's fragmented and easily hackable. So I think the challenge right now is how can we create this identity for all of us and do it in a scalable, and the secure way that can improve our uh, society and our, uh, ourselves as humans. So, another thing that is particularly important and scary at the same time is that the University of Washington uh, recently did a study where they actually connect to human DNA. And they connect the human DNA and include in the human DNA malware. So, Everything we're doing as hackers here is right now passing to the realms of DNA. And of course, this is building a new industry that is human data mixed with government's data and with all the different areas that we're doing in the short term, medium, long term. And of course, this is quite scary, but as well exciting. So blockchain and smart contracts are the epicenter of the tentative to create security for data and creating a scalable capacity to find solutions and to find ways of building identity in one end, both for each of us individuals, but as well for governments and corporations and so forth. And of course, this brings a lot of questions in terms of society, economics, and as well governance for governments and so forth. So I think right now, this is for me the biggest challenge we have. 
And I think the, the biggest challenge as technologists, and everyone here in this room is technologists, is how can we leverage this and build technology that can be scaled and can create solutions on the short term, especially for identity. Because identity is the most powerful thing we have as human beings, and as well, how can we leverage this? So, how can we improve this situation of touching DNA and at the same time keeping the same technologies that we have and making the bridges between all these different technology and ecosystem? So that's what I'm trying to solve as a technologist. And I think everyone here in the room has a responsibility towards that because this, of course, is going to be the biggest business in the next 50 to 100 years. And of course, all of us will be part of this, especially as DNA becomes completely digital. So, as the letters of DNA can be changed in genetics, we can do this as well in technology and overviewing both the digital and the organic side. And that's precisely what is happening right now as we speak. It's not in five years or ten. This is happening as we speak. The healthcare industry is right now looking at this, but the challenge is there's still not infrastructure or technology capacities for this, and that's the opportunity. So, moving forward, and I think coming back to the ID, and there's a plenty of research I put on this. I have a couple of papers that I'm going to do in my books. But I think is how can we look at these implications and build technology and software that can actually solve these problems. So, and of course, in today's of volatility, it was mentioned by Brian, the challenge of bug, uh, bugs, spam, fake news, and all these different things that we're facing right now. But when it comes to this challenge of changing our own DNA is a much, much bigger challenge that we are facing right now. And of course, uh, some ideas here in terms of how we can use smart contract technology, and especially blockchain and AI to fix this. So especially in the idea of uh, security and privacy for data, flexibility and easy to use, and high performance capacity. And of course, building a full user ID DNA. And of course, if you look at the transportation, geographical, cultural, scientific, financial, statistic, meteorological, and natural, all of these are different types of DNA. So all of this data, we're digitizing it, but right now is how we're going to apply this with smart contract technology, and especially with algorithm-driven machine learning and AI as it scales. So how can we build a new ID paradigm? We can build it looking at provenance supply chain, task automation, the velocity lines between physical and digital, which is the biggest challenge, auditability and access uh, in terms of making sure there's a predicting of data, distributed database, encryption, digital trust, and of course, peer-to-peer -peer networks, which is partly what we as digital part of the society are already doing, but most of society is not doing. And this is, for me, the biggest paradigm shift that we have to build as technologists, and I think I hope companies like you that can fix these problems will, will make the, the next trillion dollars business. But this is a big thing because most of these technology are in early days and they're very easy to hack, very fragile, very unscalable. So if you look at the healthcare wellness networks, we have at the moment wellness apps, electronic medical records, global patient ID software, inventory management, rehabilitation incentive programs. But most of this data, again, is fragmented, cut it in different silos. And actually, most of these cases, for instance, in the UK, last year, there was a massive issue that the biggest hospitals in the, in the United Kingdom were hacked. And mostly, they were hacked because they were using a Microsoft Windows software that was 10 years old. But during the space of three days, most of the biggest hospitals in the UK were not using any IT system, they were down. So this is, is already happening, and this is a big challenge, but of course right now is how can we build this data ID in a way that can be scaled easily. So the data flows are particularly important because it's where we have the challenge. We have machine to machine, that's another challenge we have, human to machine and human to human. And I think this is the biggest shift right now that we have when it comes to technology is how the three different flows that we have, machine to machine, human to machine, and human to human, data processment, and cybersecurity systems can actually be built in a, in a systemic way that can avoid the challenge that we're facing right now. So, 
physical and digital DNA ID. This is for me my graphic where I try to explain the challenge we have. So in one hand, we have our society identity, so financial identity, insurance identity, military identity, and the government identity. In the other hand, we have a much more personal identity. So healthcare, emotional, psychological, religious. And of course, in the end, we're using blockchain AI and IoT that are the mainstream foundational technologies. And then we have a crypto data DNA that we are building right now. It might be, when I say crypto, not necessarily just in the sense of cryptocurrencies, but in the sense of encrypted technology or tokenized technologies in the sense of digitalizing ecosystems of identity. So this is for me the biggest challenge between the physical and the identical, the physical and the digital that we are facing right now. And that's, I think, the biggest challenge for all of us here in the room that we have to solve. So, and if, just some things, as most of us here, and, my, and uh, Brian mentioned a lot of these things, these are the biggest things in terms of cybersecurity that we have, from uh, malware, ransomware, firewalls, antivirus, botnets, and spear phishing, and so forth. So how can we avoid these things to be implemented in our own DNA? So that's the question I put to the room, and I would like to hear some input, because there's much bigger hackers here than me, and the people that have enough intelligence to think about this. But the idea is that in this glossary of our tech ecosystem, the challenge to secure the DNA in a world of digital instability and security is used. And this is, for me, a very, very important thing that we have to solve. So, very interesting thing when it comes to blockchain and AI. So Brian mentioned that blockchain at the moment is very instable. It's completely true. So if you look at the dot-com boom, we are in the similar state. Similar state. So last year, the blockchain or crypto industry was $700 billion. As we speak today, it's probably uh, 200 to 300, 300 billion dollars, mostly about the 1,900 cryptocurrencies that exist. But I'm not talking about blockchain technology. Blockchain technology, we talk about trillion dollars, which is different from cryptocurrency uh, um, ecosystem. But the thing is at the moment is that blockchain technology is used in all of this, from music to national security to tourism, especially financial transactions. But this technology is still early days. A bit like the internet, it was very weak, and it took 10 years to become mainstream. We're doing the same right now. But if you apply blockchain with AI, we have assessing of data, we have prediction of data, inferring, sensing, and reasoning, and the relevance of data. So if you apply the smart contract technology with machine learning and machine-to-machine -machine processment of data, then this creates a massive jump in the history of mankind and hopefully not just screw up our humans, but you can create humans of first stage, second stage, and third stage. And this is already possible. So especially if you use swarm intelligence patterns to try to look in DNA and genetics. So this is a big thing that we need to consider. And of course, I'm provoking all of us here, but I'm working on this on my own, and I hope everyone is conscious about this. OK, so just to wrap up, I don't know how much time I have, but I'll try to just wrap up. So the opportunities here is definitely, as 90% of the world economy is not digitized, we have a lot of opportunities to create much more business. And I think as we digitize data, and data holistically, the opportunities are massive. For instance, uh, the software I'm building, I have clients and the outreach right now of 1 million people, but I can go to 200 million people that are interested to go on their own data. And this is the opportunity that I feel especially with the cybersecurity community and data communities being conscious about this. We cannot leave this just for governments or for the, f the few players in Silicon Valley that control most of our data, or in China, but you have to apply these technologies in an intelligent way and in a subtle way. And of course, ID and DNA, we cannot reverse this. This is right now is happening as we speak. So this is going to be a quantum leap in our history of humans, because if you look at the history of evolution, the evolution will take hundreds of thousands of years for us to be mutated, humans. In the next five to 10 years, or 20, we're going to have singularity happening, we're going to have a lot of things, machines to humans, and we're going to be able to create hybrids between humans and machines. So something that would take hundreds of thousands of years to happen, now is going to be possible to do in the space of years, decades, or even months. Of course, I'm not trying to be futuristic here, but there's a lot of things that are happening as we speak right now. But of course, the biggest challenge is about governance and ethics. This is a big thing. At the moment, uh, 
as I mentioned in the example of someone that acts database of a smart contract de dealing with DNA or 23andMe, these companies that are uh, touching DNA, we have a substantial uh, issues right now. And of course, as humans, we have greedy. Yesterday I had a very good talk with one of our speakers here and bloggers. We are greedy as humans. If you look at the cryptocurrencies and the ICO industry, it started to create decentralized ways of funding startups. It started being a game of traders and pump and dump tokens. And this is not sustainable. We need to build this in an ecosystem of sustainability. And that's very important for us. How can we manage ID and technology in these ways? And of course, to set up this, we need to create trustworthy organizations. And I'm very happy to see, for instance, the speaker, Brian, what he's doing with this organization. That is an organization that is independent, looking at technology and finding solutions. But there's much more work to do, especially as we take this to a much more sensitive ways. And trust me, I'm not being crazy here because this is happening now. There's thousands of companies around the world working on this. And some of these companies are working with governments and they're doing already, for instance, the China government has created a social score that actually can rank every citizen in the country in the attribution of uh, better citizen, worse citizen, having more financial credit score, less financial credit score, according to the taxes you pay and how you do behave in society. So this is happening now, not in a couple of ways. And of course, this brings a potential tsunami of data and tsunami that can actually create a lot of disruption. If you look at what happened with Brexit, we look at Trump and all the ideas or the ideas of manipulation of data. This is a big thing that is happening right now as we speak. And of course, uh, my last slides is, as DNA is now digital based on the foundation of our identity, and digital identity and physical identity are matching, of course, still in early days. The three questions I'll leave for all of us is, can you optimize the human code? Can you hack it and destroy it? Or can you, can you reboot human evolution? Of course, this is a bit futuristic, but it's very important to think about this, and I would like to pass this to the audience. And last but not least is, are you ready to be hacked? Everyone here, and me included. Okay, thank you so much. And um, this is uh, my overview about this. I try to be as synthetic as possible. Don't know if there's any questions. I'm available for talk. I'm, uh, my, my details are over there as well if you need something. It's a pleasure to be here, and thank you so much. Exploit blockchain.